Okay. <laughs> so I'm, bringing, I'm really bringing it down around here. Qual quality is taking a beating, but ingenuity is picking way up. The last thing I said before the camera went on was like, we could just get a paper clip so that we could just use that as a connector for the light switch. But so in this episode, we're fixing everything that's wrong with our uh, C232. And there's there, there's a growing list. So um, but that's what you get when you buy something that you don't even know runs. So there we go. All right, so first things first, we're going to bring it inside and service it because uh, in servicing it, we might be able to find some other things, but air filter, oil filter, hydraulic filter, um, that filter, which is about to rust through um, and grease it on a few other things. So um, it'll be a full video on kind of going over everything there is to go over because Andy needs it like really bad now so <laughs> and it's like obviously you bought a toy you want to use it so <laughs> well yeah but uh, i just took a look and i have to have a lot of uh grass in the yard leveled out so drive over it with a bulldozer bulldozer it was either that or a tank <laughs> but you're working on the tank i think this thing's running almost so we'll just do a service on this instead of the tank sounds good <laughs> See if we can love this thing. So that's the lift mode. The heat's not up. No? No. Well that does. Yeah, so so see that? Like as soon as you put the hydraulics off, it, it revs up. Now let me try it. now? No alarm. Oh, What's that? Hold on. What's that? Now I got a... Uh... Do you have hydraulics or no? Okay, so we grabbed one block there from across the road that I need for the uh, um, low boy and ran into a couple issues. One, it's not revving up very fast. So I think that is on the pump and there's a set screw on the throttle and you can see it's turned in all the way. So this little knob right here is pushing up against this plate. So when you're pulling on the spring, you're not getting full travel. So we'll back that off. We'll give her a little bit extra RPM because even in high speed, it travels pretty slow. Now it's also, um, it's got a, 
got a weird issue where um, when the hydraulics are on, uh, when you hit this, the temperature will shoot up and then it'll go into a limp mode. It'll start cutting back. And then if you push it so the hydraulics are off, the temperature will go right back to where it's supposed to be and um, it won't go into limp mode. And the voltage reads like four volts. And I know it's not four volts because it wouldn't run off that. So we're gonna check our uh, voltmeter just to make sure maybe there's a bad ground on just this system right here. Um, and the fuel gauge isn't working either. So no fuel gauge, the temperature gauge is off and the voltage is off too. So the fact that everything's kind of in here makes me think that there's an issue here, but we'll still um, do everything, carry on with the service and everything that first. So there we go. Okay, Andy's done the air filter and it was right full of mud. So he's thinking that the thing was completely buried at some point. Um, I'm doing the final drive. So you want this level. Um, you got your drain plug and your fill plug. So it actually smells pretty good. We'll change it anyway, but basically drain it at the bottom, um, crack your top one. And then uh, this is like the worst smelling stuff that you can imagine when it's actually worn. Um, and then fill the 8090 just so it comes out here. Don't overfill it. Um, everybody wants to put that extra little bit in there, but this does not take much oil and doesn't need much oil. But if you overfill it, you'll push it out the seal. Um, plain and simple, it needs to expand in here and contract again. And when there's no air to do that with, um, it will just push it out the seal. And then you're thinking you got a seal when all you did was add too much oil. So level to the bottom of the plug. Got the hydraulic filter. Yeah. Good. Those are your fuel filters. So the fuel, it's here somewhere. But we need that small one for here. But um, for it overheating, um, and you notice that this is kinked. And it's kinked down there and this hose is supposed to be on that side. So that is a problem. That looks like it. Hey, burrs. Well, that's hydraulic. All right. So sometimes a lot of oil comes out when you spin that out. If you crack it, I'm a that's really handy. So like the engineers that work at, that design this thing, man. Yeah, thank you. I don't think you'll get that super tight in there. Put it in the mud so it rots away. Yeah. And people don't even know it's there. Oh, I think I can get it this way. Okay. Oh. Smash your fingers. Oh, yeah. It'll be a slow Does disaster. Does move? No. All right, let me see. Yeah, even like that, your wrench hits the... Wow. That is just dumb. It's still all dirt behind there to you. Oh man, like a lot of dirt. Yeah, that's like piled up behind that filter. I change the filter and then you squeeze some dirt in there. It's just the engine oil? I think that's it just is. engine oil. So yeah, good that your engine, I hope that's not your hydraulic oil. <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble, man. <laughs> Did you drain the engine oil yet? No, no, the, the, your engine oil won't go through your oil filter housing, not unless it's under pressure. Oh, gotcha, so, that's good. So we're okay with this. We're okay. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try and clean that. It built its own seal? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This is never so... ever leaked from there. <laughs> <laughs> Not one drop ever hit the ground. <laughs> Just built a solid mud oil seal. Yeah. Like you can see how much has rotted away from this housing. Like this is all, it's supposed to be 
nice straight edge, and then it just like, it just gets eaten away from being in the mud. Like where the oil filter, where the rubber sits up against is still okay, but man, oh man. Engine oil filter, check. Yep. filter change we've got fuel filter change we gotta do the other two yet we gotta tip the cab up but i want to see if this hose being kinked fixes the uh overheating warning um and I'm throwing it into the lint mode check the oil level after we fire it up necessary rag. but yeah and then we'll go uh, before it gets dark i'll grab a couple more stones and see if that does it um we'll go back we'll grease it and go from there I was able to grab two stones and it was still doing it so I unplugged the temperature sensor but it was still doing it so I still got a reading so maybe it's this one so I'm gonna unhook this wire as well that could be there's a glow plug is that my glow plug uh no I don't think so I'm gonna unplug that and see if that changes my temperature <laughs> give me a limp mode Okay, so now sitting in the seat, all of them are zero. So let's turn it on. Oh, turn my key on. Aha. So now it's not reading. So 
And he's got the covers back on the sides. Uh, these clips are all different. We got a couple bolts in there. Um, those threads are stripped in the side plate, but Andy's gonna take care of that. I tied up everything on the uh, engine side there and then finally bolt these down. Uh, these screws are all broken, so just self tapped them here and then put the screws in the back side there so they shouldn't go anywhere. Um, there's still lots that I need to do to this thing, but I need to also find the time to do it. So in the meantime, Andy's going to take it and then I'm going to take it back in the fall and do some landscaping around my place. And then you write a list in the meantime of everything that works and doesn't work and what the quirks are on how to uh, get this thing back up to par again. Like a report. Like a report, yeah. I can report back to you. Okay. All right. In the meantime, don't break anything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you guys know what's going on with the voltmeter and the uh, fuel gauge and the thing cutting out, for now it seems to be working. If you, once it starts cutting out, you just turn the hydraulics off, but the hydraulics still work, and then it idles fine and revs up fine. So it's a troubled machine, but it's still an awesome machine at the same time. So there we go. We got uh, some fine logs that I cut down uh, last fall uh, so I just got pine here right now uh, that's gonna be going in and uh, rich has some white oak um, so I'm gonna bring that all in at once hopefully the next week or two we got uh, some milled lumber and uh, rich can get the, the drop deck uh, put back together and we can put a little bit in the back of 55 all right here we go I need you to chime in here, help me out. The New Holland heads, Hollanders, the New Hollanders, Holland heads, whatever you guys are called. Um, need you to help me out. When I start it up, I get a little bit of arrogance from this computer board. I, it might just be the uh, all the electronics in there. But when I start it up, it's got a whole bunch of uh, things that it's mad at me about. There's a couple errors that stay on there for a while. And then I have to sh hit this button in the bottom corner to give me all my hydraulics. But once driving around for maybe a minute, two minutes with it, it locks right up. And I, if I hit the parking brake, parking brake says it's on, but it's not really on. But that settles everything down, allows me to uh, use all the hydraulics again. So that one's a weird one. The other fun one, that I found with it as I'm going along. Once I put it into rabbit mode, second gear, bombing along, I'm gonna go to a pile, move something around. All of a sudden it just goes, boom, stop sign, everything lights up, seatbelt kicks in, I lock up, try to keep myself inside the cab. Then I get back, I gotta restart it. So I don't know if I'm bouncing and something's making contact, short note. Rich and I were talking about it, that could be, uh, something that's going on. So if anyone's had that issue with these new Hollands, let me know, or those cases that are similar to it. So with most machine fuel filters, they're easy to find. Oh, and a buddy, even though I did it with Rich, and I remembered that it was, a, that I couldn't find it. I should have went back to the video. I didn't. Looked around, so take a look. Anyone, can anyone tell me where the fuel filter is? It's here, it's hanging out. So there's the inline fuel filter over there. So we'd switch that out already. So I'm looking for the fuel lines, fuel lines. I said, Rich, do you remember where it was? He said it was in a real silly spot. Right over there, right over there. It's in the door. So as you're looking over here, trying to find it, swearing and all ticked off because you can't find this twist on fuel filter. 
lo and behold, right over here. <laughs> so I think I ran her low the other day. Might have got a little bit of moisture in her. A little bit of dirt. Gave her a little, little drain out the bottom. I don't think anyone ever really does that, but get some of the stuff out of the bottom. Um, other than that, pretty solid machine. It lifts a ton of weight. I filled a uh, scrap bin with it. Um, lifts a full car, maybe 3,500, 4,000 pounds. Right up in the air, no problem. Fill it with anything you want and it'll pick it up. Uh, so I think it needs probably a bigger bucket. Gotta get some forks for it. Uh, but yeah, pretty versatile, pretty fun so far. Yeah, I think she's a keeper. All right guys, you know what Rich says, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. And I'm not rich, I'm Andy. So, and I'm not filthy. So I'm Andy. So if you're not filthy, you're Andy. <laughs> there we go.